Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Digital Art with Jesus Conde and today we're going to be making a rendering exercise with a mushroom. So let's get started. So as you can see, the first thing that we need is a good drawing. Uh, this one was just a sketch that I scanned. Um, I, made, I made it on paper and now I'm just doing a little bit of lines here and there to, to make it look better in general. It doesn't have to be like super sharp or like perfect. You just have to make it good enough so it's uh, fine for you to paint later on it or under it. And now we're going to start with the uh, base colors. Uh, the base colors are sometimes are tricky to understand because it's gotta be like a flat color uh, that is the general representation of that color without shadows or, and without lighting. So we just need for now um, the the base of the of the mushroom and now the head of it and it's gonna be like a reddish kind of going to uh, yeah like a purplish kind of kind of thing it's not like a perfect red if it's too red like too saturated red looks bad so you wanna you wanna go for a very desaturated color red uh, as you can see here and I'm also I'm I'm using two reds here uh, just to give it a little bit of color variation I do have a step uh, of this process with color variation, but I just want to give it a little bit uh, right away. And now the dirt on the bottom, this can be just uh, brown and some other tones of brown. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. Just good enough for us to to see like which colors are we using as a base. Okay, so the next step is cast shadow and volume. Uh, we need to cast the shadows and we have to imagine what the path of a lighting uh, being cut by the surfaces of the of the objects in this case the mushroom um, so the light is coming down and it's being cut by the surfaces and it's casting a shadow on top of all the other surfaces in the image in this case the other the secondary mushroom and the floor so we kind of and we're going to use like a half um 50 percent opacity kind of something like that for that step uh, next will be the ambient occlusion which is basically the darkest darkest areas of the shadows so the part that are, are under shadow you will get this kind of like a very dark places that is where the light is really having a really having trouble to get there so uh, and I'm not using completely uh, black as you can see I'm using some like a very dark purple um, something that I like to do is color variations I have a lot of trouble doing uh, making things look painterly and uh, traditional looking so I do this step where I add this kind of a like, different tones of the same color uh, a little bit more purple a little bit more uh, like warmer or cooler depending on the on the topic that I'm working on so just to add a little bit more interesting more vibrancy to the image and it's not just like a very boring painting you know so having this kind of like different hits hints of color in different areas make things look way more interesting than if it wasn't if if this wasn't there it will look like kind of like flat looking even if you you make like everything super uh with a lot of volume and perfect shadows and everything I guess it will look kind of like a 3D-ish, like very just perfect. And it's not supposed to look perfect, it's supposed to be uh, interesting, right? So the next step will be highlights. In this step, we're gonna imagine that the light is kind of like reflecting towards us. So it's kind of like a mirror kind of thing. So depending on the direction of the surface, you will have these spots where things are way more lit. Now, um, for the bounce lights, as you can see, I'm just grabbing the color of the ground, which I think it will be like the most, uh, like the predominant, like the most, the, like the hardest light coming from another direction will be that one, the floor. And you will catch these uh, tones of the, of the ground coming like on the bottom of the mushroom, right? And I'm also trying to add a little bit of that field light of the, of the sky this case it will be bluish or like purplish kind of thing depending on the color that we have and that will be uh, representing the sky the color of the sky 
Now I'm going to work on the rim light and back lights. And in this case, you just need to, uh, well, it depends if you need it or not. I, I like to do it in some cases. In this one, I'm just trying to show you how I do it. And in this case, I'm just adding some kind of like a very hard lighting coming from the back. So obviously it will need to be harder and stronger than the key light, which is the light that is coming from the, from the top. And you will catch this kind of like very um, uh, specific line around the mushroom or the object that you're painting with light and that will make everything more interesting so for the final details which is like the best fun part of all um, now that we have all the ingredients we can basically apply the same thing that we applied in the whole process just in more detail more uh, specific right uh, right now I'm trying to add a little bit of um, things here and there that make the the image less, less perfect and more interesting. I'm also correcting a lot of issues that I have with proportions. Uh, some shadows look off. Uh, the volume doesn't read very well. So I'm trying to fix all that. And adding a little bit more of, of just cleaning everything a little. Uh, trying to to find that balance too. If you go way too hard with the details, then it, it tends to look too perfect. I, I used to do that a lot. And that doesn't really look like a painting though. When you do everything like extremely perfect, it doesn't look like a painting. It looks more like a photo or a render of a 3D or something. And for some reason, I, I just got uh, like kind of like tired of making everything super extremely detailed. Um, if you're working on an image that's going to be printed though, like a huge uh, advertising or something like that, which is some stuff that I have to do with uh, for work before, you do need to put a lot of detail, but, but it's because of the size of the painting. Like if you have something that is incredibly huge, uh, you need to be detailed, because when you look at it close, then it's kind of like... Um, it, it gives away way faster like all the trouble that that is there all the all the uh, mistakes and everything uh, I was at an event once where you could see like the painterly look of a of an image on something that is was like uh, three meters by four meters or something and it looks way <laughs> way more obvious when it's printed than on a screen on, on your computer right so when you when you're working on something that's big you do need to pay attention and you have to work incredibly uh, big canvases like I'm talking more than 6,000, 7,000 pixels, more than that so be aware of that so right now um, I'm working on this uh, mushroom and I'm looking at a picture of a mushroom and trying to see what things are on the real uh, one that I can put on mine and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of really tiny little uh, white spots. I'm looking at um, different color changes on the shadows um, and stuff like that. I'm also doing a little bit of color correction as you can see here which is very um, something that I do a lot at the end uh, but I'm already like testing things here and there. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I feel like this uh, effect that I do uh, where, where I paint a little bit of more saturated colors between the shadow and the and the light of the of the mushroom um, it's kind of cool I do I do that a lot I tend to do that um, I don't know where did I pick that up but I see that some artists do that and it looks great and I love it when when it looks like like very looks very cool when you have this uh, transition from light to shadow and there's more color in that transition than everyone everywhere else so uh, now I'm doing that a lot. Uh, I used to do that sometimes, but I kind of forgot how to do it. And now I'm trying to get used to that again. So this is it guys. Let me know what you think of this small video, if you like it or not. Uh, please leave me your comments. Uh, give me recommendations of what can I paint later, like in another video. And I hope you like it. Thank you very much. Please follow, subscribe, and all my social media accounts are in the description. Uh, see you guys later. Bye.